everybody, and welcome to Shift F1, a podcast about speedy race cars. I am Drew Scanlon. Joining me, Danny O'Dwyer. How are you, Danny? I'm doing great. I'm recording in my new office here, in my new home, and very happy that the noise gate is not letting you all listen to the thousands of frogs having sex right outside my door. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, Rob Zachney, how are you, Rob? Not bad. That sounds kind of restful, though, doesn't it? Like, just you're out there with nature, and nature's, like, outside your door. Beautiful. It is nice. It's nice, like, when I lived in Maryland and the cicadas would happen, and for the first few weeks, it was, like, really good. And then after a while, it becomes the sort of the maddening. It's like tinnitus. You know did, I mean? did, like did you know about this like, when you bought the place? Or is this like... No, a, oh. so we, no, we actually laughed about that, that we okay. were like what if the frogs are here for like nine months of the year? <laughs> I was like, did they have to put that on the disclosures? I'm not sure they do. <laughs> uh, if you are new to this podcast, a very warm welcome to you. If you are new to Formula One itself, well, this is a weird time to join. Uh, we've got a preseason is primer this? episode coming up. I guess. Uh, but if you really can't wait to get all of your F1 knowledge you can go back and listen to episode 216, or you can wait a few weeks, and we're going to have uh, an episode just for you that explains how the sport works and who everybody is. Um, but in the meantime, the show would not be possible without our audience over at patreon.com slash shift F1, where every month we release an ad-free version of this podcast, along with bonus podcasts and videos exclusively for our patrons that cover racing documentaries and films, F1 video games, experiments with other racing series, and a lot of weird things. So if you would like to support the show and get access to all that fun stuff, uh, might be a good time to do it because there's no racing going on right now. That's true. Uh, that's not true. I have a I have a Google calendar over here with some racing on it, which we'll get to later in the show. Uh, Ooh, but you can I'm also already here in the middle of my racing season. Rolex 24, baby. The VP <laughs> Challenge already ran two races. That's right. We're, we are so back. Uh, Patreon.com slash shift F1 for all the uh, fun patron only stuff uh, or click the link in the show notes. What's going on in Patreon land this month, Danny? Uh, we are going to be recording in uh, about a week's time for our patrons. The January uh, episode of the podcast, it is going to be Fassbender's Road to Le Mans, the film, which is a little bit confusing because there's been four seasons of Road to Le Mans. Uh, and for the fifth and final season, they just decided to uh, call it a film. And I, I would say the opening 25 minutes of it are basically just a here are the four seasons truncated and then they just get into the fifth season so uh, cool. it's available to watch like all that michael fassbender series stuff on porsche's uh, youtube channel uh, you can watch this one it's about 90 minutes long and we'll be reviewing it on the patreon exclusive episode later this month and a massive thanks of course to all of our incredible uh, title sponsors including mojo nixon gaming oh. get rich or sorry i said oh oh i thought you said no i was like wow <laughs> no. the, 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 the did the check bounce? Mojo Nixon, <laughs> you're out. Uh, <laughs> Mojo Nixon Gaming, Get Rich or Die Ryan, Agave ATX, Cyphus Training, Turf SES, At Team Blackjack, Michael Maves, Gordy's Army, At Talking Autos, Olivia Evans, uh, TelemetryDuck.com, FTC, Drew Stewart, Bailey Foot, Abdullah Althani, Jason Chadwick, Abraham Getchell, The Space Above Us Podcast, Bunny Fiend, The Sniggs, Alex Goucher, Max Voltar, Circuit Demon, Troy Stammer, William Rumpf, Ralph Bury, Lachlan the Maddened Man, and Jason Kelly. Thank you. Happy New Year, everyone. Welcome back. Yeah, yes, indeed. I believe that's uh, Get Rich Odai Ryan. Odai Ryan. Is it? Did I? Have I been saying it wrong? No, I don't know. 18 months without anyone. They, they might no have way. just. Uh, it doesn't sure make sense. sense. It, it has to be Odai Ryan. Or get rich or right. die has right. Maybe I, I, I see only an O there, but maybe that's, that's an homage hey, to your Irishness. It may be, maybe it is. But the maybe point is, the O'Di Ryan family. Welcome back, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to 2024. You know who's not going to be joining us oh, for 2024? No. Oh no! That's why we're probably here, the reason we're wrong. doing this. This episode, yes, exactly. <laughs> to be quite honest, <laughs> that's why. Like, this is a little earlier than I thought. We'd have like a major off-season news drop. Uh, you know, this is the time of year where people are like, get ready for the announcement of our livery unveiling. Like, who cares? That's I can't do. I can't podcast about that. But Gunther Steiner, uh, his contract was not renewed at Haas. Mm. Uh, and then, you know, in true Haas fashion, uh, Gene Haas, like, let go some rather unvarnished remarks about why they'd sort of reached that point to, uh, you know, move on. And 
you know, then Gunther was was able to, you know, give his side of the story. And now the new team, team principal is someone very familiar to viewers of, uh, you know, Drive to Survive. It is Gunther's longtime, like, right hand and technical director, uh, Ayao Komatsu. So, and that is maybe also where this gets interesting, because <laughs> to an extent, uh, it seems very clear that Komatsu was more than ready to t- step into this role is kind of how it sounds. So, you know, this all, this all happens. Uh, it's not, it's not really, I mean, obviously it's kind of a firing, but in terms of how this is shaking out, Gene Haas did not renew Gunther's contract. It was up after, it was up after 2023. And then in the holiday break, According to Gunther Steiner, like literally between Christmas and New Year's, mm. he gets a phone call from Gene Haas and is told his contract is not going to be renewed. And that's that. Gene Haas's position is fundamentally that, uh, and his, his statement was a little hard to parse at first because he's, he's kind of talking around the things that led to the breach. And then later we find more detail out about what's what's been going on. So like he's... At pain in Gene's in Gene's like statement following uh, the announcement that uh, Steiner was out, you know he makes a point of noting that you know they have a great partnership with Ferrari when it comes to you know acquiring hardware and des- designing hardware uh, in conjunction with with Ferrari. Uh, he also then made a point that he was embarrassed by the team's poor performance, mm. um, and that part is hard to argue with. Like, I, I think it's, this has not been a popular move. I think it's easy to say a lot of people were immediately like, this is, like, you know, basically this is the death of a beloved character on a TV show. <laughs> and <laughs> you're right. And I think, can, I think that can obscure the fact that like the fact that Gunther plays a lovable loser who is the focal point of a lot of uh, Drive to Survive. The fact remains that the team is a perennial loser in F1 and yeah. has been for a number of years. So you can see where that would be getting a bit tiring. Uh, as luck would have it, uh, Gene, ha- uh, not Gene Haas, but uh, Gunther Steiner was, I think attending a, he was attending like a charity event that week, but Autosport were able to interview him like, like shortly after. Yeah. Sky, Sky Sports F1 as well. Had, had him on camera, like almost immediately. It was very strange. Wow. Yeah. Th- I think, yeah. So he was like, this was not intended to be one of those things where he ends up doing a press conference about his dismissal. It just sort of works out that way. And, you know, in, in Steiner fashion, I'm sure you, you all have like, of like your own things you noted in from that interview, but in broad strokes, what he outlines is the fact that like one, you know, no hard feelings, like life's like that. Uh, but two, that there was some disagreement about the strategic direction of the team. That, as we've often talked about, Haas was from the very beginning, and this was controversial at first, was a team that bought far more than the normal amount of components for their car off the rack, as it were. Like, that they they acquired, like, uh, substantially their car is fabricated at Ferrari facilities and uses Ferrari equipment. And it seems like Gunther's position was that one of the things fundamentally holding the team back was that they did not they had they were not receiving a higher level of like capital investment in like their facilities and their ability to design and build a greater share of their own equipment. Uh Gene Haas's position is that he sort of he's already nearly quit the sport apparently once. Uh he's right. he's sort of maxed out his contribution and fundamentally he does not think that they need to take on the kind of liabilities and investment that more traditional teams do in order to compete. Remember their goal is not necessarily to be a, a, a race winning team in the near future. Uh, one of the things that I think, you know, Autosport cites as a point of comparison is that Alpha Tori is in a similar boat in terms of needing to source equipment from elsewhere and they perform better than, than Haas has. Uh, so, you know, Gene Haas's perspective is that, you know, Gunther may not think this is the right direction to develop the team, but what's on the table is more of the same. Like that's what that's the direction they're going. And then and, and, Komatsu and, and just, is clearly good with that. 
and and just on that note, I think the, the the you know if you look at it from a pure business perspective, Gene Haas's investment, regardless of how well the team has done, is paid off dividends. <laughs> he now is like he owns one of the seats in F one. He owns a team that is you know taking a, a slice of the pie, as it were. And and if he had an exit strategy at this stage, it'd be a really good one. I'm not sure what's going on, but um, it has to you know maybe throwing good money after bad money like. I can, I can see plenty of teams we've seen over the years who have thrown money at the problem and not fixed it. And I, I worry that the gulf between what they do and the sort of odd skeletal way in which the team is sort of structured um, in terms of how it builds its own components. I wonder, does the, does the leap to what Steiner wanted, is it a fairly significant one? Like, does it, does it involve trying to employ a lot of people, you know, expand the team and get, you know, folks with really good competency in areas that they don't already have and they're going to cost a lot you know i wonder if it's just such a fundamental shift that it's it was never on the cards for haas um it's so hard to figure that sort of stuff out but clearly you know clearly steiner was also had a tricky run of it you know what i mean it was alpha tower is also like a feeder team for a way bigger uh, enterprise that you know has a great amount of talent coming through it's uh, it stores every you know a year. Whereas Haas were scrambling for you know Grosjean who is inconsistent, uh, Mick Schumacher who didn't take off, and then a bunch of lads who sort of seem to retire from the team and come back every few years. So it's not like they had you know even even in the driver's seat they've been sort of scrambling a little bit. Yeah, I think the uh, that is also one of my questions, Danny. Is like how how much. Like now that we are tipping in one direction instead of pulling between two, what are the margins? You know, what, what, how high can this strategy actually uh, go? I think what I am curious to see is the difference that Komatsu makes in that. Um, so he, he points out something in a, a formula one.com article, uh, saying that he's basically um he's not going to be the guy like a lot of other team principals and like steiner was to be um out there gaining marketing dollars right gaining sponsorship so he said he says here uh quote when i was given this opportunity i made it clear to gene you know my expertise there's no point in me trying to focus on the marketing side and trying to get sponsorship because that's not where my skill set is in that field i need someone else who's an expert in that area to run it then i can focus on the technical side trying to get an organization that we can improve the technical side of the team so you know what what does that do like if are does will it have a marked effect having someone focus technically and having someone else focus Marketing wise, it's tough. It, you know, it's impossible to say because because we don't work there, right? But yeah, I, I imagine that that could have an outsized effect. Like, on the team. It, it, I, I always wonder, like in a in a sport that see, Mark, you know, advertising seems to be quite critically important to Formula One teams, right? It seems like it's a large reason why a lot of this sort of happens, um, and th- that's why this whole thing sort of. It's a little bit. It's a little bit perplexing. I can see how, like Rob made a really good point at the start, where like Haas are sort of the perennial, perennial. I can never say that word. Losers. They're they're good losers. Like that's the problem. Is that you might be surprised how much they have lost. Like to me, Haas is not the bottom rung team of the championship, but they have been numerous times or close to it. Like their first season uh, back in was it ten years ago? I guess no, almost twenty sixteen. They were eighth, then eighth, then fifth. So you're thinking, okay, here we go. Uh-huh. Ninth, ninth, tenth, and then eighth last year. So you're like, oh, here comes the comeback. Eighth, and then, sorry, eighth, two years ago, and then tenth last year again. So, like, they've yeah. had two, the, 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 the Gunter Steiner Haas story has had two sort of like, here we go, turnaround moments that haven't paid out. Uh, but I do wonder, just from the marketing side, like, it feels like maybe this there's a missed opportunity here. Like they are lucky that they have the third most recognizable, and to some people, you know, lay people and mainstream folks, the most recognizable mm-hmm. uh, uh, team principal on the grid in a sport where you need a lot of money and a team that probably needs more money than most. It seems like 
Like, I wonder how personal this got. I wonder if Gene didn't like the fact that basically Gunter was be was the face of the company, a company that he's named after. I have no yeah. idea, but it, it seems like maybe there was a different way to go about doing this. I'm I'm not I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Yeah, Ultimately, think... the races are the most important thing and performance yeah. on the track, and maybe he fell short. But it's not like they're bringing in a ringer. They're just bringing in the guy who was already there. Like, could you not have moved around the deck I a mean... little bit? I mean, when you're when you need someone familiar with the <laughs> the workings of the company, or, yeah, you're right, Danny. Maybe you don't. Maybe you do need someone to just come in and clean house. But they got 2026 to think about, right? Um, but I think it's it's all the more stark when you look at teams like McLaren and Williams, uh, which you know I think during the course of Haas's time, at one point or another, were tenth, were the bottom of the barrel, uh, and those. McLaren especially has made a dramatic comeback and Williams seems to be, um, you know, demonstrating just how one might mount a comeback from the back of the field. Yeah. So, and, and Haas, like Haas were last last year. Haas felt like if, 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 if there were 10 teams, but you could put a team in like 20th, you would have put Haas down. Like they were, yeah. they were, they felt like they were 10th. Oh, they felt more 10th we than it. they've ever been, 100%. You know, like, like that's how Caterham felt. That's how Manor felt a lot of the times. They were just kind of there. But also, it seemed like a large amount of that had to do with the setup of the car in race. Like yeah. it said, like it seemed like it was a car that was set up well for quality. And I don't know if that was cut to Steiner's area. It might have been the other guys. Well, I don't know. It's just... <laughs> so, like, I mean... Uh, sorry, I, I forgot to mention this part, but like right before all this started, it was probably the first sign that like there was uh, going to be a house cleaning underway. Uh, Simone Resta left the team, who was brought in from Ferrari to take over like technical direction of Haas and then gone after two years. And probably if you could hmm. say like someone was Boy. put in place to solve some of these problems, it's Resta. Uh, and the problems have been, they've been remarkably consistent, which has been that, you know, how many years ago? Did we hear that? Oh, the car drives really well, but it burns up its tires really fast. That it can't, it can't, it can't manage tire heat, tire wear, tire stress. And that's been the story of like multiple years in F one. They haven't gotten on top of the, they have not gotten on top of the problem. Yeah. And at a certain point, you start looking at well, just who's been in charge of the direction of this program the entire time. And so, just from that standpoint, like, like I think yes, getting rid of Gunther makes a degree of sense now. If this is connected to the fact that anytime a team is operating like this, where the more of your pipeline you control, the more flexibility you have, right? The more of your ability to have someone in one department that you own and you own the hardware for go talk to someone in another department where they also own their own hardware and fabrication facilities, it's a lot easier to sort of work through changes and iterate stuff. Anytime that ends up being a conversation with a subcontractor or partner organization, there's going to be friction, delays. How important are, are you to these people versus the other business they, they are doing? Uh, and it could be that's what, you know, that's what Gunther wanted to get out from. Uh, and that's what, you know, was just not in the cards with, with Haas. Um, but yeah, I, like, I do think that that aspect of it, we've talked about it before. If you take out Gunther, like obviously you want a team to be good, right? Like I'm sure your 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 <laughs> ideal, if you're a Gene Haas, is that your your F1 team is on the rise and you're kind of selling a story of like, you know, we're on it, we're on the upswing to success. But you didn't have that. Most teams don't. A lot of teams at that tier yeah. do not have success stories to sell. But the thing you did have was the fact that your team, your brand, your sponsors were in front of Drive to Survive cameras for probably a third of that series running time every yeah. season. And I can't, <laughs> you cannot convince me that the rate sheet for sponsorship opportunities with Haas didn't reflect that reality on some way. Yeah. And I do wonder, say, say Komatsu is the solution to this where he's sitting there and he's like, Gunther just doesn't know how to operate with his business model. And I do. And maybe he's right. Is it possible that like, <laughs> the the brand prominence of having Gunther there is still more valuable than being like ninth in the championship. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what, that, what. Yeah, like especially in a like you know a high tide raises all boats situation that the team is in. You know what I mean? Like, like it's 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 not like they're 
being 10th in 2023 is better than being 10th in 20, 2004. You know what I mean? Like it, it is a, it is a, I guess, look, I'm sure Gene Haas didn't buy his team to, to be last in the F1 season. And, and maybe when it hits here, his ear about all this stuff and the identity of the team in, in the, the sport, maybe it, makes you know maybe he doesn't feel great about that i have no idea how he if it feels. was something you own i'm curious for both of you if this was a, something yeah. you owned it was a business that you ran and somebody's making drive to survive and you see the guy you put in charge of it and you just see how you're portrayed on the one hand like probably millions of dollars in like sponsorship value but like emotionally yeah. how does it land yeah yeah if, especially if you're the person who bought who bought a sports team and named it after themselves you know what i mean like I think it's funny because I like chaos, right? And I, and that sounds very silly and, rude. but like, I'm also, I'm not in a position to do that or the type of person who would be able to do, you know, who would have the gumption to do that. So like, what does he want out of the sport? He wants low risk. He wants as low risk as possible. He can do it by being an F1 team. Um, and he wants to have probably something that he's proud of and that, you know, he enjoys being part of. And I, I can see but without how, investing in it. But without investing in it, I can see how since COVID it's been, it's been rough on them. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, yeah. It's I. I do wonder if this is just a stopgap. Like they needed to get Gunther out so they could put the signal out into the world that in 2026 or whenever it is that we're 2025 that we want to get someone in. I've I've no idea. I think if he was going to sell the team to Andretti or do any of that sort of stuff, I you, this might not be happening. I don't know if it helps or hinders it at all. Um, well, but yeah, I, I do wonder if the, this has to be part of a longer term plan. I know. did have a brief thought where it's like, is it like one of those deals where you're looking at buying a home that might have an in law apartment or something, and there's someone living in it who's like a renter, <laughs> and like you can make it part of the sale agreement where it's like, I'm not evicting anybody. You put your home up for market. Like I want to buy your home, including that apartment, but like I ain't being the one to get that person living there out <laughs> of there. there. <laughs> and I do wonder if, like, step one of if 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 Haas is going to go on the auction block. Nobody wants to be the one who, like, I bought Haas and I fired Gunther Steiner. Yeah, Gunther Steiner. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, here's here's maybe this is in, in a real sort of anime reveal. Maybe they sell to Andretti, and then when you know uh, the the handshake happens, it's actually Gunther is the team principal <laughs> over there, and you're like, huh? I do wonder though, like, do we see him? Like, is he done now? Is that it? Do we? Because that that's the thing about F1 is that <clears throat> you lose your seat. It's very very like Dino Ricardo is an anomaly. It is tough to get back in. Uh, for for team principals, that's that's maybe a little bit less so, or maybe similarly so. The the one, they seem to stick around longer these days than, they, than I remember well, them. Well, it's funny you say that, Danny, because racefans.net <clears throat> has oh. just pointed out only two F1 teams have kept the same bosses over the last two years. Oh my God, really? Yes. Well, what about McLaren? Uh, no, Andre Stella is new to his position. He's been there for a minute, but he's new to the position. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. they have a weird situation where he's, He's not the Zach Brown's not the team red, so I forgot about that. Right. Um Okay, yeah. No, you're right. And wasn't there rumors that Resta was maybe going to Alpha Tari as well? I think I saw that a few days ago. You mentioned you mentioned Simona Resta earlier. Oh, yeah, I can't right. I can't I remember think, what uh Simona I think that Resta's was like a like destination was. Yeah. Yeah, it's just uh it's just Horner and Wolf. Horner and Wolf, that's wild. So and, and as 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 uh, Gunther actually spoke to this a little bit, where he's like, uh, "It feels like there's some t like team principals are starting to get treated like football managers, where right. sometimes it's like, well, if you just need a vibe change, just sack the gaffer, and <laughs> things will will maybe tighten up for a little bit." And he's like, "That's just not how F one works." But we are in a period of unusual volatility in that role because yes, the only guys who are in, as Gunther mentioned. <laughs> Toto doesn't really count because he owns a third of the Mercedes team. Right. So the only team principal who's in there just because, like, you know, people have, well, like, locked in on confidence with him is Christian Horner. Right. Beyond okay. that, yeah, everyone's been turned over or is newly promoted. Like, I think Fred Vasseur kind of gets, like, he's new to Ferrari, <laughs> but, like, come on. 
<laughs> Fred Vassour is just trying to catch them all. He's trying to be yeah. the principal of everyone on the grid at this stage. Um, who is the one then that you say? So Alpine don't haven't really filled Safner's position. They have the interim guy, Bruno Famine, right? So mm-hmm. yeah. So I guess there's there. I mean, who else? And uh, we'll get to. Uh... Oh, Alfa of Romeo. course, of course. That's probably well, yeah. But the yeah. The, the in third place yeah. is Mike Crack for the for the longest. Yeah, two years, one month, fourteen days. Wow, there you go. That's crazy. Yeah, James Vows is obviously shorter than Nash. Mm-hmm. Oh, Laurent uh, over at uh, what you call them? Whatever they're called now. Have they renamed them officially yet? What's well, let's there? let's okay. get to that, Danny. Uh, after <coughs> the break. The, okay, here, here, the break. The br- I shouldn't have said that because here comes the break. The break. Here it is. And now we're back from the break. <laughs> Thanks, Danny. Hey, no, hey, no, I'm the one who said it. This, so I'm shoot, <laughs> I shot myself in the foot there, Drew. <laughs> yeah, uh, we're we're dealing with. I, I uh, reinstalled Windows on this computer. My camera doesn't work. My having weird well, microphone the, stuff. So. Look, you got it's like it's like your first it's you got to do your stretches right it's like yeah. first first time back on back on the field after the winter break poor rob's dog is freaking out cuz he's forgotten what podcasts are <laughs> i've got frogs everywhere it's just we're all yeah. we're all doing our best oh no here. i want to be clear this isn't the dog freaking out this is so toward the end of last year unfortunately like mina was diagnosed with cancer Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, that all happened behind closed doors. You're right. Yeah. yeah. So like she was, she's diagnosed with, with cancer. It's you know a terminal condition. Don't know how long. But in the meantime, being treated for it and you know getting a you know tumor excised from body, she's in really rude health. And so she is at like clockwork between like nine and eleven p.m. every night. She gets fired up and she starts playing with her sister. Uh, oh, and okay. so it is a, and there's not enough space in this apartment to, to get separation from that. I need to figure out a solution. The only times that have been reliably like quiet for me during a podcast is during the afternoon when I bring my setup downstairs. And if I sit with them, they'll be reasonably quiet. They'll be like, okay, there it's cool. Go. It's like sleepy time. But like, if I'm up here, it's a party. So <laughs> no, that's, I, like, that isn't a dog freak out. That is just like the, the usual, like nine to 11 PM, like chaos wrestling, like Session. chaos wrestling. Okay. Match. Yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of chaos, I have a new name for Alpha Romeo Sauber. Oh God. Uh, so oh, they, God. they in 2026 uh, will be uh, Audi. Uh, but until then, Alpha Romeo uh, has left them as title sponsor to be replaced as <clears throat> oh Jesus it's so bad sorry if you've if you've not heard this yet just sit down pull over pull the mm. car over just just because <laughs> this is oh my dear I I had to look up I thought it was April Fool's Day go yeah. ahead Drew yeah <clears throat> Stake F one team kick Sauber. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking AI made this name. <laughs> uh, yeah, and it just it just keeps getting better because if you go to um, the official website of Stake F One Team, so okay, that's that's obviously a mouthful. So mouthful of steak. Yes, there is Stake F One dot team, uh, <laughs> which is their ostensibly their this team's website. Um, it is only a press release and a YouTube video at this point. Um, on Formula One's official website, they call it Kick Sauber. So there's already confusion about what we're actually calling this team. Is it Stake F1 team? Is it Kick Sauber? No one knows. Um, because it, it's even made more muddy by the fact that on Stake F1 team, Kick is only noted at the bottom of this press release. Uh, in a in a URL https colon slash slash kick dot com slash stake f one team. If you're unfamiliar, <laughs> Kick is a Twitch competitor. Yes. If you go to this URL, uh, it has one thousand and fifty one followers and zero videos. <laughs> what? Nothing on the about page at all. So it, you should. So what we should contextualize perhaps that stake. It's not the oh, it's not yes. the dinner food. It, right. This is the S T A K E A K E. Almost and, and also to muddy it further, yeah. 
Go ahead, Rob. Well, I was going to say almost as if like you're staking someone for like going gambling. <laughs> That's right, yes. Rob. Because yes. stake dot com, which I can't get to uh, in my country, I, it redirects me to stake dot us. So I've opened up uh, a browser tab in Panama um, to inform <laughs> me that it is the leading online crypto casino. It is, and it is also partnered with so you're going to see a lot of drake Uh on it which is confusing because it already sounds like drake Mm. stake and drake um they've also partnered with other uh, folks like uh the ufc you'll see a lot of stake on yes ufc as a longtime uh fan of mixed martial arts and a viewer of ufc um ufc is perhaps the sort of canary in the coal mine for shitty advertising mm. so if you can especially in recent years and uh, once i got rid of dynamic fasters um i think uh so the fact that stake and then this other company kick are sponsoring the team you might think well that's a lot of word that's a lot of words to get in the car every every uh, week so they came up with this genius idea did you hear about this drew i don't know uh they're they're splitting it some races the car is going to be covered in steak stuff, and the other half of the races they're going to be covered in kick stuff. Oh my god, I didn't know that. <laughs> so I don't know how they're going to do it, but the the, the original uh, head uh, report on it that I heard from Autosport or somebody was that yeah they were going to d- divide it because um, ain't no ain't no room. So just that's probably why you're getting a lot of this. Who who's sponsoring the team both of them why are the names separated by the it's just very terrible wow. Ter- poor uh poor Valtteri. Danny. like <laughs> i'm not saying the alfa romeo <laughs> like uh julia quadrifoglio is like the sexiest car in the world though it seems neat <laughs> but like at least it's a car company right and you're going around it's right. like drive this car like it, it's something that feels like yeah, you're. You, this is what a professional driver should be doing. Like, what are you going to be? What are you going to be asked to do now to represent the brand? Like, is is he going to have to be like bare ass naked, placing crypto bets on like football <laughs> matches? Uh, the Wikipedia page for Stake dot com is uh is pretty good. Uh, Danny, you'll be delighted to know that Stake is owned and operated by Medium Rare NV. Oh no, really? Kurosawian. Really? company uh it also has offices in serbia australia and cyprus what was the first curacao curacao yep like the port city not like not like the japanese filmmaker that's what i was thinking i was like (laughs) wow is there going to be like beautiful black and white with motion everywhere on the screen it's a lesser antilles island in the southern southern caribbean sea oh sorry i understand now i now i understand what you're saying right yeah who knew who knew it must uh, also, be tough. it must be tough out there for crypto at the for crypto. Well, it is because on September fourth, twenty twenty three, over uh, forty one million U S dollars in funds was stolen from one of Stake's Ethereum wallets in a hack that the FBI attributed to the North Korean Lazarus Group. <laughs> so it's wow, it's a great, real great, hang on, great Bowie album. I just need a better <laughs> hacking group. I need to throw the car in reverse for one second. Just uh-huh. the Twitch competitor, Drew, because I got yes. a little distracted there. So it looks like a fake Twitch competitor is basically like what you're like, like not viable. Yeah. You don't see with, the viable streaming platform there. Right. Yeah. With uh, I'm looking at kick.com right now. There's it's like Twitch, but with more boobs. I mean, Twitch has plenty of boobs. He's got to look in the right place. Man. Well, they're highlighting them here. A lot of Fortnite, a lot of Call of Duty, got some Valorant. I will be honest, the front page numbers on some of these ain't ain't too oh, wow. impressive. Okay, top live categories. Here we go. Just chatting. I'm sure that's what you're doing. 109,000 viewers. Uh, Grand Theft Auto 5, 50,000 viewers. Slots in Casino, number three, 50,700 viewers. Yeah, they might have looser rules on the gambling than... Uh, than Twitch does. Twitch is I a little bit more. I think that's their thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know. The top, the top featured stream on this one is from Daddy's Little Knox, and it's Stoned AF Phase Three, eighteen plus stream. So, uh, you know, well, this this place might have the juice. Then, you know, it, like we <laughs> I want to see Valtteri Bottas do his but eighteen you... plus stream <laughs> Cal- calendar <laughs> calendar stream. <laughs> 
They oh. do appear to split the revenue 95-5 to the in streamer. What, in what way? To the streamer? Yeah. Okay. Hey, that sounds very generous. Hold Maybe on. Maybe not a great business model. <laughs> Remap uh, coming to kick.com near you. <laughs> Uh, which which does it does look like they've also th- yes they've they've done the thing it looks like they've I'm going to guess streamers like XQC and Amaranth are not here because like they're just trying out the platform like gotta believe they've oh, taken yeah. like sponsorship the deals. money to stream on the, uh, on the XQC oh, yeah. seventy million dollar non exclusive deal that non-ex- whoever no, wait oh my god non exclusive. Yeah. Oh my wow. God! Just throw us a, st- a stream once in a while, but you can keep your. Oh that my is, God! That is. We're in the wrong game, uh, gentlemen. That surpassed Ninja's fifty million dollar exclusivity deal with Mixer and LeBron James' two year deal with the L.A. Lakers. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's good Spring stuff. Fair play, back, damn it. Um. Yeah. I mean, she, she's going to be running for president in a few years. Well. The silent majority there. <laughs> right there. They've all been watching <laughs> their streams on our OnlyFans. Um it's a it's a lot, but look, I'll say this. We we did we did have a great scam sponsor for a while there. And we got it we squeezed a lot of juice out of it. It was mm-hmm. good fun. And we've lost Gunther, and Gunther is one of our best storylines. And maybe this is just maybe this is the universe. You know, Gunther got taken away, so they're giving us another good storyline. Um, you know, or maybe not. Maybe we just have to talk about crypto and and for the next couple of. I thought we were done with that. Well, I thought Danny, AI I was have, the latest scam. <laughs> I have bad news because okay. uh, there's a leak here from Autosport um, about Alpha Tauri's new name. Oh god, um, we had thought that Racing Bulls might be their identity, and it's still it still may be. Oh my god! But, but an there was a yes. Um, there was a leak appearing briefly on uh, as a handle on official team accounts. We have <clears throat> here we go. Here we go. Visa Cash App RB. <laughs> God, unconfirmed, but uh, that is that is so dry. That you know, so back oil just... companies aren't so bad. If you think about I know, it. you're right. You're right. I know like companies that are an, an, ex- an explanation of what they are. Like as much as I don't like steak and kick, Visa Cash App is just like that's just the description underneath the name. You need to name yeah. it as well. You need to call it something. Venmo is taken. Take something else. <laughs> uh, Autosport, Autosport points out that uh, credit card company Visa has not had a major presence in F1 before, although it was involved in an agreement with Caterham back in 2012 in a hospitality and marketing program. Can I ask you a question? Why does Visa need to advertise? Great it's, question. It's, it's, it's cornered the financial market. It's it already and, everywhere I want to be. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it and MasterCard are just like so That's, everywhere. It's like, the, what's this the is po- the Don Draper. Uh, this is the this is the Don Draper. You know, you're not happy with half of everything you want at all. Uh, this is Visa <laughs> being like, we will not rest until we eradicate Mastercard uh, from the face of the earth. We're going to do it with the Racing Bulls team. By the way, I was like, I uh, thought like is Visa launching a cash app, but no, it's Visa it, and then no, cash, it's cash app, app. The, the the separate yeah. app. So oh, sorry. Okay. Wait, yeah. wait, Camel wait, case, wait, app. so you're telling me there is an app that does, that does cash stuff that's called cash app. Yep. It, it is a Venmo competitor. Yes. And it's called cash app. That is yes. unbelievable. And it was started by never... uh, Jack Dorsey of Twitter. And, and they, oh my, okay. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Just, I would say it whatever. might be better than Ven. Like this is the Venmo. one, this is the one I primarily I do use. actually like it better than Venmo. Oh God. It doesn't yeah. have any of that social stuff. Like you don't have friends on it. It's terrible. Uh, I oh do yeah, have I, a- hate all, I hate all that shit. <laughs> I just see people I haven't talked to in six years having pizza with their buddies and feel right. left out. Yeah. I'm like, shit, I wish I was having pizza with Rob Handlery. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Good poll. Um, I hope Rob's doing well. Uh, I hope Rob's doing well too. Yeah, great guy. From from Christian Horner. I miss uh, him. Hey, Rob, want to hang out sometime? (laughs) I like pizza too, buddy. Just just pick up the phone. Just let's make it happen. 
Probably doesn't um, <laughs> So let's see. They have a quote here from when Cash App joined Red Bull in 2021 as a sponsor. Uh, Christian Horner saying, and I, I, I really want to know, although I probably know the the <laughs> what happens, ha- what the process is like for getting this quote attributed to Christian Horner. Like some <laughs> okay. some marketing, you know, the PR people write it, and then right, it gets shown to his assistant, and they go yes. Uh, speaking at the time of the deal in 2021, Red Bull boss Christian Horner said, okay, "Here we go. Something he'd def- definitely say." And this is just brilliant. Uh, this is just in copywriting. Since its inception, Red Bull Racing has been a disruptor, challenging the status quo in Formula One and pushing technological boundaries to build the fastest possible F1 car. Cash App brings a similar ethos and drive oh, to they? the world oh, of personal they? finance, utilizing technology to power quick, secure cash transfers to buy and send Bitcoin and to invest in stocks. Great. Christian Amazing. Horner, 2021. It's off the cuff. They just called him up. Reporter called them up trying to do their due diligence. Can I get a quote, Christian? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I got you. A base has that about everything, though. Red Bull has been a disruptor since we entered the F1 world. So that's why we think Kick is going to be the new streaming platform for gambling addicts and uh, gamblers alike. And also some people who are playing Pal World. No, no, no. Uh, (laughs) Like gambling addicts and gamblers who don't want to use real money. Oh, I want to use, use less money? convenient. Oh, sorry. Yes. <laughs> less less, yeah, right. less acceptable uh, form, well, Rob, of, form of currency. If you don't want to do that, you can go to uh, stake.us. Uh, and I'm pulling it back up here just so I can get the, the language right. America's social casino. Because you can't, in the U.S., give it money. It's just a place to play social games. Social oh, yeah. gambling games. Social cas- why can't you give it money in is it a, it's not illegal to it's not illegal to gamble in America, let me tell you. <laughs> well, it is if your company's registered in Curacao. Oh, you. that's why. Okay. Right. Or yeah. S- this is Cyprus at the bottom here. You know? Wow, that's Isn't good. Isn't that stuff. where a World of Tanks is? Anyway. Yep. Cyprus. Yeah. It is. Belarus let's, is where they're yeah. Let's go from Curacao to Cyprus to Madrid, Danny. To Madrid. To Madrid, F1 is attempting to start the Spanish Civil War up all over again. <laughs> that's what's going on here. I know nothing about the Spanish Civil War, so that's that was probably the incorrect thing. They're trying to get the Spaniards. No, no, no. Ca- Catalonia versus versus okay. uh, Castile is like a Madrid taking the F1 race from Barcelona. Like has a certain historical resonance. I when I read this first, I was like, come on. Come on, don't do it to Bar- that is so uh, Madrid, capital of Spain, right in the middle. Boom. Just look at Spain, look at the Iberian Peninsula, and stick your finger in the middle, and you probably hit it. Big major city. Very beautiful. Often gets overlooked though by Barcelona, which is on the sort of northeastern south of the Pyrenees Mountains uh edge. And that is where F one wait has been. Now, so F1's also been in Seville. A beautiful Spanish city. Does Madrid even rate the list? Do they even end up on the podium? Fair. Because fair. After Barcelona, you got people out there standing for Valencia, and there's people right. who are like, you gotta talk about Seville. Yeah. Madrid. Yeah, I mean, that's fair. And it's also out of the way. It's kind of an awkward one to get to. And it's not also it's also like most people go to Spain because they want to enjoy, you know, some some beautiful warm yeah. mediterranean water <laughs> um and uh madrid is about as far from the water as you can possibly get from the coastline <laughs> as you can possibly get um what's the name oh you'll probably know this drew what's the name there's an there's a name for the part of the world that is the most separate from land this sounds like a drew fact do you know oh. this one it's uh, it's like a it's like between like new zealand and like argentina and the arctic it's called like and it's where they dump all the spacecraft when they need to come back what? down to Earth. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's got a okay. name. It's, got, it's like the Z, the Z zone or something, whatever. Huh. Anyway, I that's don't... Madrid if okay. it was trying to get away from coastlines. <laughs> oh. uh, anyway, I digress. Um, 
the so Barcelona uh, circuit to Barcelona uh, Barcelona Catalonia has obviously been uh, mainstay of F1 for years it's where they do uh, preseason testing for a long time uh, it's where the uh, opening race was for a while I think it's it's an early race in the season people really like it. it's a really good track it's also MotoGP it's a good track it's, it seems like a track that's in good health it seems like they often get really good crowds there it's got a lot going for it there hasn't been other Spanish Grand Prix Seville was on uh, this uh, sort of street track was on this, uh, the calendar for it seemed like a long time and no, it Valencia, been in... no, Valencia. oh what did i say uh seville oh i sorry sorry yes valencia um and then uh well what they've proposed or what they're doing is building a new track which is part surface roads like like regular public roads and part private roads right next to real madrid's stadium the santiago bernabeu um which is Fairly central Madrid, I would say. It's not like in the middle of town, but it's like it's in Madrid. It's within the city limits of Madrid. Um, uh, it's beside the uh, the Madrid Exhibition Center, so it's a big sort of area. It's got good public transport. Apparently, they're expanding or adding in uh, some subway stations, but it's already well connected to buses, subway lines, like most sort of European soccer stadiums that are within cities are. Um they went through 24 different track models, uh, and the one that they have landed on is uh, five and a half kilometers. It's 20 turns, uh, has an estimated qualifying lap time of about one minute, 32 seconds. Uh, they're hoping to get it up for 2026, and it's been given uh, a very long contract up until <clears throat> 2035, which I guess you would probably suspect with a new track it would get a long one but that's i think that's the second longest contract i think bahrain's the only other one that goes further than that and that's an extra year to 2036 um apparently the track it's hard to tell from the picture so you can you can look up on twitter what the madrid track might look like um apparently seven between seven and nine is de- is pretty sharp downhill which we don't get a lot of in f1 you tend to get some sharp uphills and then uh, you know, gradual coming down. I think Portimao is maybe the only one that stands out to me in that respect. Um, and turn 10, which you can easily see is the sort of like semicircle over to the, the east side, uh, could be banked. They're going to be exploring what type of banking, if any, they might add to that one. But I would say, just looking at it right off the bat, that it seems like, 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 it seems a bit like a, like the Dutch Grand Prix. It seems like mm. where where are the straights where we're going to overtake on this? Like where are we going to be able to are the is this is this built with the promise that these cars will be able to follow behind each other in between turns? That would be cool. It kind of looks a bit like Mexico if you got rid of the straights, you, you sort of compact it a little bit. So who knows? Like we always we never have a clue um, what it's going to be like. The problem though, you think is are you going to end up in like a situation like Germany, right? Where you you can't you might not be able to support two races within the same country. Um, it's worked for Italy. It has worked. I mean, the you know, it's worked for... I think you could get away with a second one in England maybe as well. And Australia then Italy, has and a 10-year deal for what it is worth. So that this... Oh, it does. That's a long one too. <clears throat> yeah. When's so that maybe they're doing... Maybe like they're just trying to do 10-year deals from this point. Get them up to it. Um, yeah. Uh, Dominicali was obviously pressed on the whole Barcelona stuff. Um, and he said, uh, I got a quote here from Autosport. Looking ahead, there are discussions in place to see if we can really extend our collaboration with Barcelona, with whom we have a very good relationship for the future. Um, you have to assume, I don't know, I'm hoping it won't dilute it. I, I think people in Barcelona will go mad if this becomes <laughs> the, the, the de facto Spanish Grand Prix. Um, I hope it's a good track. I don't. I think this is an economical way of doing a track. It's not a particularly exciting or sexy way of doing a track. This um, gives me huge Hard Rock Stadium vibes. Like, yeah, a little bit. The yeah, aerial yeah. picture of it, like yeah. everything. It looks like obviously, if you had shown me just a trace outline of what the Baku circuit was going to be, I probably would have been like, "Well, that's ridiculous." <laughs> Although I don't know, maybe the mini golf aspect of the little castle section would have would have caught my <laughs> eye, but I probably wouldn't have said that's going to yield several of the most memorable races <laughs> right. of like the past decade of F one. You never know how these things are going to play out. 
Zanvort, I was like ready to burn Zanvort to the ground until a North Sea squall brought us like one of the greatest <laughs> moments of, of the year. Like it's it's a high variance sport, but I'm just like when I just look at the aerial photo- photography of the site, I see a lot of 90 degree turns. I see a lot of like truncated straights, and I just don't believe that it like. You know, we we heard it, we heard a great deal about like ah oh, the banking at Zanvor. It's gonna be it's gonna be wild. I don't know that it really did. Yeah, like change up the the vibe all that all that much. That feels like a little bit of a you know they're, they're gonna string people along with like well maybe it's gonna be really a really interesting street circuit that uh you know is basically jammed next to a, a major stadium. I am. I've never loved Catalonia as an F one venue. Um, I know right. it has like an elevated reputation in, in moto, moto uh, circles, like that it's a right, great yeah. motorcycle venue. I've never loved it as much in F1. And then I think it suffers from a little overexposure from the standpoint, like any racing game, Catalonia is going to be in there. You have to drive <laughs> on it a lot. Uh, but I don't like this just speaks to, I think, a lot of the anxieties we've we've had and spoken to before about like, the sport wanting to get away from purpose built racing venues and like circuits to road courses like this. Um, I, you know, yeah. I, I will say it's interesting to see an expansion in Europe. That's probably, we haven't seen that in a while. And yeah. obviously, there's been the sort of globalization of, you know, the sport. We've had a lot more in the Middle East and obviously in America in more recent years. So that's interesting. I do. It, it, this has a weird, like, Formula E kind of vibe to it to me as well, in that it's like in the middle of a city and it's it's around a convention center. You know what I mean? Like this. You mentioned Baku. Baku is a great example because you're right. Baku. When we looked at the picture, we were like, "Well, that straight's too long. That's ridiculous. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, half the track is just them getting back to the first turn." Um. Uh. But the one thing Baku had going for it, once we sort of, you know, you sort of like wheel down and, and and have a look at the city is that it was taking place within the city and it was taking place within like this interesting yeah you know visual uh you know medieval sort of place whereas this like you said will feel a lot more hard rock because you're basically driving close to real madrid stadium and around a convention center like this is this is not this is not the beautiful streets of you know uh an, an, an ancient spanish city this is going to be like some place a little bit further outside that was developed in the past 20 years right so it's not gonna i don't think i don't think i don't know i've never been to that that, that particular uh part of madrid so yeah it's it's a funny one i like it kind of i'm i'm surprised i guess i didn't i didn't know that there was that much of a a thirst for it there i can see them putting it in a major city makes sense i guess barcelona is always like really well attended so you know maybe there is a lot of that but it's yeah, I don't know. Like again, a lot of these places, you sort of think they are destinations uh, for tourists and stuff. And I don't. A lot of Irish people go to Spain and Portugal, and not many of them go to Madrid. You know what I mean? Like, I'm nothing against the city, but it's in Spain as well. I'm not sure if it's the it has that draw that like tourists want necessarily. So who knows? I guess it it does seem. Very odd. I was very surprised when I read about it. And I continue to be surprised. I haven't heard an argument for it that's not... Maybe, it, I don't know. But then, you know, is Portimao the most exciting place in the world? No, but I like that circuit, so I don't care. So I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm just looking at it with different uh, priorities in mind. Danny, the uh, thing you were trying to remember was the Oceanic Pole of Inaccessibility, also known as Point Nemo. Point Nemo. That's it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, how the hell that. did you search that? I'm, I'm, what search terms <laughs> from Danny's explanation <laughs> led you to that? Because I was like, I don't know, I like, I don't know how to begin to like begin typing <laughs> that. Uh, I searched uh, on Kagi.com. Uh, point farthest <laughs> from all land. Okay, excellent. Um, yeah, there are also north, south, and uh, continental poles of inaccessibility. Yes, there are. So the furthest yeah. from ocean you can get is uh near the border of china and kazakhstan nice yeah that's pretty good or madrid that's also that's the second one <laughs> yeah oh in north america uh south southwest south dakota Makes seven sense, miles yeah. north of the town of allen interesting i would have thought it was in canada but i guess allen's just is out that, there is that any water does that include the lakes or is it oceans 
I think it's oceans. I guess a lot of those oceans come down into Canada. I mean, you, yeah, can, you can read Nemo. about the methods of calculation here on uh, Wikipedia, Danny. I, th- I think I, re- I think it came up because I was reading about what they were going to do with the ISS. And I yes, think gonna... they are crashing it into Point yeah. Nemo Wait, in uh, twenty thirty one. Okay, it was, was the like, least uh, next week. It was the least <laughs> Damn, expensive way. Disassembling was going to take a long time. Uh, pushing it out was going to take a long time. Um, so yeah, they're crashing into Point Nemo. It's really um, apparently the water down there as well. It's also big. They got a lot of the trash goes down there and sort of swirls around. Yeah, they got some of that. They got some of that stuff. Danny, you know too. a lot about Point Nemo. Hey man, I the, got a. Uh, right, sometimes. Page. I just snuggle into Wikipedia late at night and see where it takes me. All right. Well, um, where are we going to get taken, Danny? I guess if we're if we're looking for for stuff to to do before Formula One kicks off, before Drive to Survive hits. Exactly. Exactly. You Danny, want Drive, are, to, drive to Survive's not here? coming. We got Kirkland Signature Drive to Survive coming. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We have drive to Survive at home. We have drive to survive at home. Uh, I feel bad now because I really like NASCAR. Uh, NASCAR, <clears throat> unsurprisingly, perhaps, have gotten around to doing their own series. And they put a trailer out for it. It's called NASCAR Full Speed. And it will be coming out on Tuesday, the 30th of January at 8 a.m. GMT, which is five days before the preseason exhibition in Los Angeles. Uh, it is a five-part series. I think all of it is dropping on Netflix. It's a Netflix, by the way. I think all of that is dropping on Netflix the same day uh, as they want to do. And there is a trailer. And gentlemen, uh, let's all load up the trailer. And we'll do a <clears throat> okay. little live watch along. This is on Netflix. The link is in the description. Uh, the video title is NASCAR Full Speed Official Teaser. Uh, you might have to use the link in the show notes because it says it is unlisted here. That it's sounds got 329,000 views. That's impressive for an unlisted video. Yeah, Netflix unlist a lot of their videos because they produce a lot of stuff, so they don't want it all cramming people's thing, which is very silly of them, but whatever. Huh. Um, yeah, so NASCAR Full Speed official teaser, uh, Netflix, uh, link in the description. It's only about 72 seconds. Gentlemen, do you want to watch it? Uh, yeah, yes. Absolutely. Let's, I haven't okay. seen it yet. Let's press I haven't play. seen it. Danny uh, has. I have. Count us in. Rob, Rob hasn't? Nope. Okay, here we go. We'll do it in three, two, one, play. Okay, three, two, one, play. Okay, we got a guy. Got a lot of slow mo. We got, we got the. They're oh, tuning their instruments. Freaking bald eagle C one thirty. Yes. Yeah, I'm Fast already like, at sensory overload. The music, the sights, the cars. So they have a bunch Good of the drivers. Titles. Oh, the the family angle. They're praying. They got the the partner praying to God to keep them safe. Mm-hmm. We got a kid driving a car. <laughs> Child driving a car. <laughs> Ooh, got some crashing. Oh, some oh, that's right. I was I was wondering time to time to the first punch being thrown. Punch followed immediately oh. by pyro. Oh, like, and a really bad crash. crashes. Yeah, that's a bad one. <laughs> Think about what Think a badass that is. <laughs> it's a good trailer, right? Yeah. yeah. I'll watch that. I'll, I'll watch, watch that. Later. Five episodes? I can eat that for breakfast. Uh, I am uh, I am planning to camp over at Sonoma this year. Oh. I'm taking the trailer. I'm going to camp on the infield to convince my wife and kid to do with me. I'm going to just do it do it proper. Be wow, that, that you're either going to convert a young motorsports fan to a <laughs> lifetime of like... <laughs> You know, tra- traveling around, camping at various infields and events, or, or she's never going to race again in her life. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I want to get her. I want to get her. I want to get my daughter's five and a half now. Um, celebrated her half birthday a few days ago. She was nice. very determined. She's figured out a way to. She's going to move up to quarter birthdays. I'm pretty sure pretty soon. She figured that trick out. Uh, I want her to. Um, I want to get her into the Petaluma Speedway stuff. I am hankering for the Speedway to come back. It's closed for the winter. I, I think it's back in March. Man, I love the Speedway. It's a good time. Uh, so if I can get her into that, I'm set. That's like the next 10 years. Done. Good stuff. She started to get into football, although it's about to end. But she liked the fact that she's able to figure out the team names because most of them have animals oh, uh, okay. in their logos. Mm-hmm. And she's like, oh, it's the Lions against the... Um, she calls them like the the swashbucklers. And I'm like, well, you're close enough. <laughs> it's, it's a better <laughs> it's like name, actually. Yeah, exactly. Nice. Yeah. Uh, you know what else is a good time? Sending us an email, shiftf1podcast at gmail.com or f1.cool slash emails. We read the emails on the pre-race shows. 
Uh, so you can send them in if you'd like. Um, and uh, you're probably wondering, mm-hmm. uh, now that we've explained how to reach us through the world of cyberspace. Okay. Are you padding for time here? What's? Uh, no, I'm trying to connect emails oh. and the racing going on this weekend. Oh, emails. The emails. The, the emails. Emails. See, we forgot it's a podcast. Um, let's just jump straight to it. We're going to race around the way. Hey, yeah. Nice. Professional. Uh, World Rally Championship is going on this weekend in uh, Monte Carlo. Ooh. In Monaco. Maybe Ooh. you've heard of it. We've also got the Formula E Diria E Prix in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. And as Rob mentioned, the IMSA WeatherTech they- Sports Car <laughs> Championship Rolex 24 at Daytona. Sorry, I was late to the punch. But Saudi Arabia loves renewable energy. That's what they're all about. <laughs> That's true. Yep. yep. Uh, yes, the hallowed grounds of Daytona International Speedway. Uh, apparently, Max Verstappen already won the, uh, the iRacing version of this. So Of course, yeah. Good stuff. But they didn't crash into anyone in a fit of anger? Uh, unknown. Okay. Didn't watch. Uh, but when can we see... F1 cars is what everyone is wondering. Well, apparently, uh, Williams and uh, yep. Sauber. <laughs> Sorry, who? Stake F1 team kicks Sauber. Thank you. <laughs> uh, it sounds they're... like a direction. Like <laughs> kick Sauber. Like it's just whatever. <clears throat> um, February 5th is when Williams and Sauber are launching their cars in New York and London, respectively. They're not uh, doing it exclusively on kick.com. <laughs> no, it's not exclusive. <laughs> to, a, to an audience of 200? Oh, of course. Yeah, sorry. Gamble uh, on what color the car is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that'd be good. Don't give them ideas. Uh, the preseason test, though, when cars will be on track, February 20th through 22nd is when things kick off. Uh, and we haven't talked about this, but I, I would say the latest date for our preseason primer is February 21st. Cool. Uh, Cause the, the following week will be the Bahrain GB GP pre-show Grand Prix, <laughs> the Grand Prix, <laughs> bring your uh, crackers. Yeah. <laughs> spread, spread the Grand Prix all over. Uh, it's crack- March play. 2nd. There's plenty of crackers at the Grand Prix, man. Don't worry about that. <laughs> uh, March 2nd is uh, is when uh, race cars start racing in anger. It's coming. It's coming. Yeah. Hey, wait, Danny. Uh, D- Danny, do you have your book? <laughs> the book. Oh, shit. Is that, is that what you were? Is that what you were? Do I have my book? I, I am moved an entire curiosity house. curiosity to know what happened on this date. And I'm sure someone else was dying of something on this date in, in <laughs> F1 history. I don't know if I had. Give me. Can you guys pad for 10 yeah. seconds? Let's see. <clears throat> I'm going to run upstairs. Pad for maybe 30 seconds. Let me see. How Absolutely. Okay. Rob, uh, <laughs> should I just pull up Google Calendar? It's, how does February 21st sound to you? Uh, it I think great. in the past, we've given it two weeks between the preseason primer and the first pre-race show. But I feel like. We we might have one day of testing. I don't know. No, I mean, well, what do you mean? Like we're they're going to do the full like three day test. Uh, right, but the preseason primer would go up, I think, after the first day. We would oh, we would right, be recording right. the day prior. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe we do record it the day prior, so we don't. Let me so think we are tainted. Yeah, yeah, okay, no, that, that's great, that's perfect, because then we can do it without knowing anything about the testing. Okay. And then we could do the Bahrain pre-race. And talk about the test. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's how decisions get made on Shift F1 podcast. Man, it's so much less interesting to talk about testing, because, like, back when they did it at Jerez, you know, you had the entire, like, to what degree is this going to translate to when we start racing at F1 ba- venues? Because they didn't race at Jerez, right? They tested there. Mm, that's right. But they, they wouldn't, like, that wasn't where Grand Prix was held. So there's always this bit of, like, you know, how accurate is the sample? To what degree are teams sandbagging? And it feels like since they started doing it at Bahrain, everyone's just showing the true pace. It's just an extended practice session for Bahrain. Hmm. Danny. No, Joy. Sorry. Oh, okay. Sorry. Very confusing. I guess you know we can always 
Uh, let's see. Let's look it up. Drew, go yeah. about, what does Kagi.com uh, have to oh. say about uh, let's see. January 23rd, 4th, 24th in F1 history? Let's see. Oh, there is a. Oh, you don't want to do this. You don't want to do this. Don't go to the fandom page. It's a lot of birthdays and death days. Oh, boy. Uh, I got one. Midland announced to buy Jordan's uh, Jordan and to participate in Formula One at the beginning of the 2006 wait, F1 season. Midland? Midland F1 team. It was a Russian-owned team. It was... Uh, who bought them there? Oh, that's right. Yeah, Eddie Jordan, Eddie Jordan sold his eponymous team on January 24, 2005, while Alan Prost was forced to wind up his own self-titled squad in 2002. Oh, yeah. Wow. Uh, this is from Formula1.com. They would know. They would. Um, pretty thin on the ground. Motorsport.com only has Ken Miles' victory uh, at the Desert Trophy Race at Palm Springs in 1954 as a notable Ooh. racing event for January 24th. So we we are in a we're in a brief window here where there what you know historically not enough racing has been going on this time of year for yes. notable events. Scott occur. Speed's birthday, San Jose, California. Yeah, and, and also it was on this day. Is that right? Jensen Button became the youngest F one driver. Well, <clears> that doesn't make any sense. He surely didn't start racing in January. Is it like Benjamin Button type thing? Who knows. Maybe he signed I, I'll, I'll then? find the book. I forgot. Well, maybe he signed then. You're right. That's probably it. He probably signed then. Uh, the 1967 St. Louis tornado outbreak. Tornado outbreak. An extremely rare wintertime tornado outbreak affected the Midwestern United States on January 24th, 1967. Over That's 30 terrifying. confirmed tornadoes. With full and of it was snow? caused by oval racing, creating a cyclonic <laughs> effect uh, that affected local weather systems. Look it no, up. It was oval racing. It's that real. Stopped them. They had to stop them. They had to drive the other the direction. Other. Yeah. <laughs> it's creating an anti-cyclone. They had to get the supercars up here. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that's as good a place as any to end it. Um, thank you, everyone. Uh, f- I guess final thoughts. Uh, uh, Danny, on uh, on these on all these news stories. Yeah, I would say, um, uh, what do we got? We got, a, we got one. We got two bad pieces of news. Steiner out. And the the terrible name, uh, on uh, and Madrid is sort of a neutral piece of news because I don't know. It will it force another track out? I don't know. Although I am, I am looking forward to the sort of uh, um, rich energy, uh, you know, ness of this mm. new terrible sponsor. Like, let's see where yeah. this where this takes us. Will Kick dot com survive the next uh, two years? Right of this, we'll have to wait I and guess. see. Yeah. Final thoughts, Rob. Uh, yeah, I'm, you know, I might have to go back and watch the start of last season, Drive to Survive, to see that last, like, Mattia uh, and Gunther at their, at, at the vineyard, uh, and yeah. just pour one out for them, while I reflect on their immortal friendship, and my fervent hope that they, they both end up leading F1 teams again, uh, very soon, because I find them compelling figures if not necessarily the easiest sells <laughs> as great team principles it, the, the drive to survive is going to be bittersweet this year isn't it it's yeah. going to be tough yeah we yeah. wonder if they'll follow up with them mm. well uh if you'd like to support the show and get access to all of our bonus episodes the ad-free version of the podcast and the official shift f1 discord where the party has not stopped hasn't stopped Can't uh stop. You can do do so over at patreon.com slash shift F1. Have a good race weekend, everyone. We will see you all next week. Meow.